Hello everyone, welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. Now in this video, we're talking about pattern design. Woohoo! I'm very excited about this. As you know, I've been transitioning my career towards surface design and that includes pattern design. I made a video a few weeks ago and a lot of you mentioned that you were very interested in this market as well. So I'm going to be making a lot of new videos about this, including today, I'm making a tutorial about pattern design and specifically how I put together my repeating pattern tiles in Photoshop. Right before we get started, if you're new here and you would like to see more videos like this, then don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell. The bell sends you a notification every time that I upload a new video and this way you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. Also, I have just started a brand new Instagram profile for my surface design stuff. So if you're interested in pattern, surface design and all of that stuff, make sure to give me a follow. My handle is Vanessa.Stoilova. I'm going to put the link in the description below. I'm going to be sharing all of my designs, tips and tricks, inspiration, and just in general share my journey in this world of surface design. So if that interests you, go give me a follow. It's such a brand new baby profile. I have only like 150. 50 followers so I would really appreciate your support now let's get started friends so how did I create a repeating pattern such as this one using Photoshop well first of all you need to know that I paint all of my motifs with gouache and then I add some detail in coloring pencil so all the individual illustrations come together like this in a scan and then I must clean them first and cut them out of the white before I can use them so first I would crop this image like so and I would make some color adjustments to get the whites really white to get the colors just so. So I'm going to put an adjustment layer down here for levels. I'm going to brighten the whites a little bit. Now the reds are very flashy. <laughs> so I'm going to get that saturation down much better and I think the original had a little bit more blue in it so I'm going to take a color balance and I'm going to add a little bit of blue into these designs all right so I'm satisfied with this I would merge all of this together with the background layer duplicate this add a color underneath just so that I can see what I'm doing and fill the layer underneath I'm going to delete the background and then what I would do here is get the lasso tool and just roughly cut out each painting and copy paste it into its own layer so I would do this for all the motifs and then delete the original layer so now what we must do is separate the white so there's no really magic way to do this what I do is I take the magic wand can play with the tolerance a little bit depending on the image that you have it's going to need uh, you know between 10 or 50 tolerance and uh, yeah then we're going to select the white this looks about right and i'm going to go click here on the mask icon to create a mask and this was <laughs> it cut out the flower instead of the white so i'm going to click on the mask and click Control i to inverse the selection and now my flower has been cut out pretty roughly so what I do here it's not magic I just literally zoom in and I manually adjust the selection this time it really wasn't too bad but there are a little bit of adjustments to make so I take a brush which I like this uh, rough pencil because it gives a little bit of a natural look I just put the flow to a hundred percent and then using the black I would just manually like this adjust the selection sometimes the corners need to be adjusted if it has eaten a little bit too much into motif itself then I would use the white to undo that and that's why we use the mask instead of just erasing because we can adjust it as well so I would go like this manually all around the flower and just manually adjust the selection so that it looks just perfect. 
And after I'm all finished with it, I would just right click the layer, select quick export as PNG and simply export my layer like this. Now the next step, we're actually going to start building our pattern. So I'm going to create a new file and you can create pretty much any size that you want here. So there's no standard, but since I'm working in raster, so pixels, not vector, I need to create a document that's large enough so that, you know, I can print it on multiple different sizes without having to redo it all over again. I like to do a 12 by 12 inches in 300 dpi but you can really do many other sizes you don't even have to do a square it can be rectangle there are just so many options so this is our square here and now the magic <laughs> the magic of photoshop here is the pattern preview tool this is actually new to the photoshop cc 2021 version so it's brand new and we get to use it and i'm just so happy because it's an absolutely great tool so you go into view and you select here pattern preview it's going to warn you that this works best with smart objects so fine that's fine <laughs> and so it creates this view like this right now there's not much to it but your pattern, everything that you put into this square, you're going to see repeated automatically outside of the square. I have my folder of separated PNGs that I've, you know, all prepared beforehand. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into my square here and look what happens. Magically, <laughs> it's repeated all over. And if I move this flower around, automatically updated okay this is the same if i put it over like this it's going to be automatically repeated tiled so this is just as you can imagine wonderful for creating patterns i can drag and drop as many of these as i like i like to drag and drop because it creates automatically a smart object so the icon that you can see here this means that you can go into it and it is a smart object and this view pattern preview as they warned us works best with the smart objects so that's perfect for drag and drop you can duplicate this as much as you like and you know make them like this bigger and you can put together your whole pattern like this and it's just going to automatically update as you go which is just magical so of course you would have to work this so it's a really good repeat so that there's no holes anywhere so that it looks good. If you zoom out, you can see this pattern repeated pretty much to infinity. <laughs> but this is about a good preview to see what's going on. You know, we can add more things here. Let's drag in these branches. Now, obviously I'm going very fast here, so I'm not creating a very excellent pattern, but uh, this is how you would do it to create a pattern. And then you can move these things around as much as you need and see in real time what happens to the pattern. Now, what would happen if I wanted to add a background to this? So of course I could just create a new layer and then, you know, bucket and that would be it. I could add a background like this, but I think this looks a bit bad with my style. I would like something hand painted for the background so that it matches my motifs really well. So what I like to do is I paint a background separately and then I import it in. So let me turn off my things here. So I just paint a background like this, right? I put it in just like any motif. And then I would make it bigger like this until the repeat looks sort of okay. We're going to have to adjust, but okay. So this looks about right. We can see the line here. <laughs> we can see where it repeats, but we're going to be able to adjust this. So actually, if you go into view and you unclick extras, it's going to undo your little preview square. And that's going to be quite useful. So you can see a little bit better because we're going to try to completely remove this little line here. What I'm going to do is rasterize layer on this background. And then I'm going to select 
the stamp tool, okay? I'm going to choose soft round pressure, make it a lot bigger. All right, so this looks about right. I'm also going to tap this, which is going to make the opacity pen pressure sensitive. Then I'm going to tap Alt on my keyboard, uh, select a sample, and then I'm just going to be able to paint over and try to erase these edges. All right, so this is not perfect, but already you can see that it's looking quite good. We don't see these edges much anymore. So I would, you know, take my time a little bit more if I was doing this on my own time and just make sure that it's really, really perfect. But for this tutorial, I'm satisfied with how this looks. I would go into view, turn on my little square again so that I can see the repeat turn back on all of my layers again. Of course, I could be adjusting this. I think what I did in the original, I made it a little bit more bright and I wanted a green color. So I modified it a little bit so that it's a green color. This is about what I did for the original. And look, like we did this in five minutes. I know it's not perfect, but <laughs> you can see how, you know, that would work if we took a little bit more time to make it really nice. Uh, this would work really well. You can also add details hand-drawn with this view. It works too. I think what I did in the original is um, I selected some of this spatter with the spatter brush with a white color. And then I just, you know, added some spatter like this. And you can see how if I add something near the border, it appears on the other side automatically so that's just absolutely so great and easy to add any texture and things like this you don't have to use other methods to make sure that it repeats perfectly as we used to have to do before this tool you can just paint freely like this and anything that i add here it's going to be repeated on the other side automatically how magic is that so now that we have our pattern finished let's say <laughs> how do we actually save this and send it to a client well, you could send a PSD just like this with all the layers and that would work just fine. If you want to send just the repeated tile without the layers, then you could select everything, merge using Ctrl E, so it's all merged into one layer. Then you could go into view and select again pattern preview to undo this view. Now you do have to merge all the layers first because if you didn't do this and just went and undid it with the pattern preview, See what happened is it removed all the extras that the pattern preview tool added. So you won't have the flower repeated here. It removed some of the duplicates that it created for you. So you do have to merge everything first and then undo the pattern preview in order to have the tile like this. Then you could export this as a PNG, send it to client, bim bam boom. <laughs> Or something else that you could do, directly in the pattern preview, you can go edit and define pattern, okay? So let's say pattern two, all right. This is going to save a pattern swatch into your pattern library. I have my pattern library right here, but if you don't have it, you can go get it by clicking window and patterns. And as you can see, the pattern that we just created is right here. Now you may be wondering, okay, but how does that help me exactly? <laughs> You'll see, it is amazing. Let's create a new file. Okay, this is a bit of a weird shape. <laughs> Let's do like this. And if I wanted to fill this with my pattern, all I would have to do is create an adjustment layer, select pattern, and it fills my layer with a pattern. I can just select the one that I want. I'm gonna get this one. I can adjust the scale and I can even adjust the angle like this manually. If I change my mind later, I want this a little bit bigger, I can just go back into it and change it as much as I want. And that is really, really great with this tool. It is really useful to create easy Instagram posts and also sell sheets for your designs. For example, this is a template of my cell sheet and I have a square here that I've prepared so I can just create a new adjustment layer pattern, 
and then get my pattern, put it to about, I don't know, 50% <laughs> and create a clipping mask onto my block and boom, my cell sheet is created. It's as easy as that. I can move it around just to make sure that it repeats exactly how I want to. I can go back in, change the scale. It's pretty magical. What I like to do when I create Instagram posts or anything like that, where I don't want people to be able to steal my patterns, I will make sure that it doesn't repeat perfectly. So I will create a scale where, uh, you know, it doesn't repeat exactly. And I like to put a little bit of an angle, like 5% or something, something that's very subtle, but it will make it very much harder for people if they steal the pattern to repeat it because now it's not in perfect alignment anymore. So creating a tile from this would be much more difficult. This is a great way to protect your patterns when you put them up on your Instagram, sell sheets, etc. And this is it. This is how I use Photoshop in order to create and export my repeating patterns. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. And I will be creating a lot more videos about surface design and pattern design. So if you're interested, stick around. <laughs> We're going to talk about it more. But for right now, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.